gentles and ladymen. I'm Spiro, and I'm not a wizard. Today's video is going to be sort of a continuation, or rather the flip side of my last video. So my last video, um, I talked about getting source code from um, a C64, so through the through the emulator or through a, a disk image and convert that into plain text so we can read that on a modern computer. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to do the other way around. Um, and this has partly been because I've been working on my own little engine for my text adventure. Um, but I also discovered for, for, for Visual Studio Code uh, an extension called Commodore 64 Basic V2. And this uh, does syntax highlighting. is quite nice. Um, it actually has got quite a long list of... It, it's kind of a help. I mean, it doesn't obviously have these features all built in, but it does tell you how to get to them through vice and things like that. Um, one thing this does have oh it does have a list of the, f the control codes <laughs> that's funny okay I ended up not being able to find them so I uh, I found them in the source code and added them here but actually they are in here as well. That's nice to know. Um, what they have added for this extension as well is an automatic proofreader from Compute Magazine. So this, if you've done any type in uh, listings from Compute, they, in the, the later years anyway, they, they started adding... Um, Actually, I can probably even expand this. You don't need my whole desktop. They started adding um, checksum codes. And this extension does that proofreading checksum, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, I haven't used it yet, but it's nice to know it exists. The only one thing I found that's kind of weird is that for the syntax highlighting to work it this relies on the extension being dot prg uh, it would have been nice if it worked with dot bas files uh, because i don't really want a non-tokenized file to be called dot prg so it means that I've got to name so this one here to or token should have been token token source um, to do my test and I'll create a tokenized PRG file and load that into vice directly um, so we'll show you how it's done so first off I've just written a little short program that uses a bunch of these control codes right um, so first off it uh, it prints the clear so it um, clears the screen um, and then it does a bunch of down arrows changes the color to white uh, prints a couple of lines to show off the white text does a little pause goes up a bunch of lines changes the color to green goes right 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 um, print some more text and then this you'll notice that these are capital C's normally all the all the code is written in lowercase and that is uh, a feature of the uppercase and mixed case character sets that is on the Commodore 64 so so Whatever we type in lowercase, 
uh, let's exclude the control codes, but anything we type in lowercase will be standard in, in, um, in Petsky on the screen will be the standard uppercase characters you see. So if I send it a uppercase C, when it tokenizes it, it will treat that as shift C. So in the normal um, character mode, that will come up as, as a horizontal line. Um, and we'll, I'll show you that again. So it'll go through all that and then I'll, uh, it does a listing at the end so it, you can see how it has converted these characters. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our new favourite pet cat command. So that um, is, is basically a, a pet ski conversion tool. So we'll say W2. So the mode, let's do a help here first. So I can show you what I'm going to choose. I think I can actually just type dash 2. Oh no, that converts to a, that de-tokenizes. So, dash W. <coughs> oh yeah, dash W version. So, tokenize using keywords on the specified basic version. And so we're using basic version 2, which will be compatible across all of these. Um, uh, well, we're going to set an out specify an output file and then specify the source file so we're going to go pet cat w2 so tokenize version 2 output file let's call it token.prg and as shown in the last video you've kind of got to do this weird Rather than them having a switch to enter the source file, you've kind of got to do these two dashes. I don't, I don't know how different that is on Windows, but I'd say on uh, Mac OS and on Linux it'll be both the same here. And then we specify the uh, the token the source file. So this is this is the file we've written up here. This is our output that it's going to create. Um, okay, no errors. That's great. So let's look at our file. So if we go look at the token source, right? This is should be plain text. And there we go. We've got a plain text readable on Linux. Now, <coughs> if we look at our tokenized version, see it's a binary file. So if we view that, we can now look at what looks like um, a, um, a source code file from or a basic program file on the C64. Um, so now if we run our emulator x64sc and we run that token PRG file um, we should have it's loading token and there we go changed our text colors it's got the vertical bar and then it printed out the listing so as you can see the clear has been turned into the reverse heart uh, the down arrows are the are the inverse Q's uh, the white text is the inverse E and then we've got here what are they the the up arrows are the the inverse uh, dot, the green is the inverse up arrow, a whole bunch of right, 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 
and that's it. And so you can see it translates it perfectly. Um, and you can load that up on your emulator or pass that on to your uh, onto an, on your SD card and put it on your real computer. So, I think I'll make this one a short one for the first time ever. I uh, hope you liked it. hope that was helpful to you. Um, now you've got both sides of the equation. You can convert from C64 to plain text and from plain text back to C64. Um, obviously this will... will this, this is only focused on basic source code, so assembly code um, will be a little bit different, and that'll depend on assemblers and blah, blah, blah. We won't get into that today, but this is going to be quite useful for me, um, and I'll show you why in the next video I've started making inroads into my text adventure uh, game engine. So, I'll see you in the next video.